How much does it cost to have an extra set of wheels and tires for the winter? And how hard is it to change them yourself? Here's my cost breakdown. Your car's performance is only as good as the tire's abilities. So performance cars come with performance tires, perfect for maximum grip and control in perfect weather. But that performance rubber isn't so perfect when temperatures drop or when the landscape turns white. My Mustang, a 2019 GT convertible, came with the Performance Pack 1 wearing Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. I took delivery of the car in October 2018 and the temps quickly dropped to the point where my grippy tires suddenly weren't so grippy. I had plans at the time how I wanted to modify my new Mustang, but I hadn't budgeted or even thought about all-season tires to get me through the winter. Common sense got the best of me, so I bought and installed a set of four Michelin Pilot Sport AS3 tires. The tires were purchased online at Tire Rack for just under $250 per tire after rebate and shipped directly to my dealership for installation, which at the time cost $100 to mount and balance all four wheels. This is where I had dilemma number one. I had to get home with my Mustang and my four almost new summer tires. Fact, the Mustang convertible's trunk is about three cubic feet less than the fastbacks, and the rear seats don't fold down. So getting four tires home posed a challenge. Yes, some of you are thinking just put the top down and throw them in. And I could have, but I didn't want to risk messing up my interior. And if this was going to become a twice a year habit, switching between summer and winter tires, putting the top down isn't always a smart option. Since we have a van, it wasn't a big deal for me to put the tires in it as long as I had a second driver. I got the car home and started driving on the all-season tires, and I was very impressed with how they rode. So far, so good. When winter broke and the buds were forming on the trees, I got excited about returning to my performance summer tires. I called the dealership to set this up and was disappointed that the price of the mount and balance had increased to $35 per wheel. $100 for a change felt about right, $140 didn't settle so well. Between the twice a year mounting costs and the inconvenience of transporting my tires back and forth, I decided that in the long run I'd be happier with a second set of wheels so I wouldn't have to keep unmounting and mounting the tires on the same wheels. I looked at new wheels, but I really wanted to keep my Mustang's look OEM, and a basic set of Performance Pack Mustang wheels can run about $1,000 new. Then I found a set of PP1 wheels on Facebook Marketplace for $300. The wheels were in good shape and included the tire pressure sensors. If you're buying wheels new, you'll also need the TPMS sensors. A set for Mustang runs about $200. I had the summer tires put back on the nickel painted wheels and the winter tires mounted on the used black wheels. My local tire shop was much cheaper than the dealership and the eight tire mounts cost $184 or about $23 per wheel. If you don't count the first two tire swaps, here's what I paid for having a full winter set of wheels and tires. So assume I didn't get another set of wheels. It would have cost at least $200 a year to mount and unmount the tires a total of eight times, plus the transportation inconvenience. So here's some things to consider if a set of winter tires and wheels is right for you. If you're going to change the wheels yourself, here are some basics that I recommend. Get a good floor jack. I've had a floor jack for years, but it didn't fit under my car very well. My GT is not lowered, but it still sits low. So look for a low profile jack and take the time to measure the height of the jacking points on your car to ensure that you get a jack that can easily clear it. I bought this one, a Pittsburgh Automotive model 64266 three ton jack for about $100 on Harbor Freight. It has a minimum clearance height of three and one eighth inches, which works great. I also installed steeded jacking rails, which let you lift the entire side of the car by reinforcing and distributing the available jacking area. If you're shopping for these, be aware that the convertible and fastback require different versions. I got mine for about $160. 
A note in the CETA instructions says the powder coat finish on the jacking rails can be damaged, so you should use a jack with a padded rubber jacking plate. I bought a universal pad that fit perfectly on Amazon for $10. I'll put a link in the description. Finally, to do the job safely, you will need a set of jack stands. I had to replace my old set, which were too tall at their lowest setting. I bought a set of Torin Big Red 2-ton stands, which normally cost $25, but I got on sale for a ridiculous $8. So how easy is a four-wheel change? Pretty easy, but leave it to me to make it more complicated. These are the standard issue Mustang Performance One wheels. As you can see, there is just a honeycomb of detail to them. So when you clean them, you have to get in all of these nooks and crannies. It's not the easiest wheel to clean. So what I thought I'd do is put a different product on each wheel, and we're going to see which stands up to the tortures of winter the best. I cleaned the wheels before putting them away for the winter. So they're really not very dirty, more dusty than anything. So I'm just going to give them a very superficial cleaning before applying any of the protectants. After a quick wipe, I'm spraying them down with Windex to help remove any oils, and the Windex won't leave any residue on the wheels. My Electro Spinny Wheel Cleaner, which I showed you how to make for yourself in a prior video, makes super fast work of the cleanup. We'll be using it later, too, to buff out the protective coating once it dries. I have three products to try, and I have four wheels. So I'm going to apply each product to one of the wheels and leave the fourth one unprotected as a control. The first contestant for my test is Mr. Fix 9H Auto Ceramic Coating. This was the least expensive ceramic coating with at least a three-star rating on Amazon. It cost about $10. Contestant number two is a product I've been using on my glass for years, Rain-X Water Repellent. Like ceramic coating, Rain-X is a hydrophobic film, which means it sheds water and makes it harder for things to stick to treated surfaces. I haven't used Rain-X on something that's not glass, so I figured my wheels would be a good test. This 3.5 ounce bottle cost about $7 at my local auto supply store. Contestant number 3 is Rain-X 2-in-1 Glass Cleaner plus Rain Repellent. I expect it to go on quick and provide the least amount of protection, but at around $5 for a 23 ounce bottle, I can afford to apply it more often as needed. We'll put the Mr. Fix ceramic coating on the driver's side front wheel, the Rain-X water repellent on the driver's back wheel, and the Rain-X two-in-one cleaner on the passenger side rear wheel. The passenger side front wheel will be left unprotected for comparison. All right, this will be a guessing game. Completely degreased to promote post-plating crystals. Okay, apply in a crisscross pattern to a depth of about 40 centimeters. Okay, wish me luck. I have no idea what any of that meant. Well, I'm gonna let that try. I, I think I'm gonna cut a narrower piece of this so I can get into some of the corners. There we go. That did it. All right, I gotta remember, I started right there. The Rain-X treatment is pretty much the same deal. You wipe it on, you let it haze, you wipe it off, you buff it. I'm feeling a little bit more generous with this product because it's such a big bottle and it costs so much less. Apparently this is a pretty good cleaner as well because I'm getting additional grime on my cloth. That's the thing about black wheels. You can never quite be sure when they're clean. Well, I guess the advantage is you can never quite be sure when they're dirty. Rain-X spray. I'm hoping this goes quick and I am not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm gonna give it a little shake. Give it a little spray. Just from a couple of different angles so I don't miss anything. And then we're gonna come back here, smear it around. 
That went so fast, I can't resist doing another spritz. Done. I'm going to uh, let these dry to a little bit more of a haze. Uh, they're starting to get there, but I guess I put it on a little bit heavy, so they look a little bit wet still. So I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to grab some fresh microfiber cloths. I'm going to change to a uh, fresh cloth on my uh, spinny tool. And we're going to come back and we're going to buff up these wheels, and then we're going to get them over there on the car. Wow, that is beautiful. It looks, it looks wet. But it's not wet. Okay, I have high hopes for this. Here's the drill for changing tires. The car's in gear, the emergency brake is on. I have wheel chocks on the opposite wheels. We're going to break the lug nuts. They are 21 millimeter lug nuts. And once they are loosened, we are going to jack up the car. We're gonna jack it up from the middle, two wheels at a time. I have Steeda jacking rails installed on this car so I can pick up the entire side of the car. If you don't have these, then just use the jacking points and do it one by one. Once we get the car up, we're gonna put in jack stands for safety. We'll take off the wheels, swap in the new ones, hand tighten the lug nuts, drop it down, and then finish up by torquing the lug nuts to 150 foot-pounds of torque. All right, let's go. Almost. Nice and easy. You know, I've always been curious if these wheels weigh less than the PP1 wheels. So as long as we're here, let's go ahead and weigh them. And we are at 57 pounds. Here's the standard issue PP1 front wheel. And this is with the all season tire. This is also coming in at 57 pounds. There's no appreciable difference in the weight of these tire and wheel sets. Let me know in the comments below if you also like to line up your ponies when you put wheels back on your car. <laughs> Let's drop it down and tighten her up. Torque to 150. Rinse and repeat, I'm gonna turn the car around, get the other side mounted up. You guys don't need to see it. I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So there is the new look for the winner. Let me know what you think about it. I kind of like the change. Well, that wraps up my overview on the costs and the labor required to own an extra set of wheels and tires for your sports car to get you through the winter. I'll report back at the end of the season to let you know what I thought of the wheel protection products we applied. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please click like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and feel free to share this video with someone else that might appreciate it. My name's Mike, the channel is Mike Fixed It. Be good, be well, be safe, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.